so the one thing that I usually see is I did not see this year is a um, budget request for each department. Is that available to you? Uh, So the police department has requested four new vehicles, which we're, it's in the process of happening right now. Uh, that's all coming out of the capital account, which I'm told uh, by Chris that we have funds available to do that. So these are SUVs. These are SUVs. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Well, we're in the process of finding out that we have funds available. So nothing has actually taken place as far as I'm aware of. As of yet. I think we were still going to talk about that as, as a council. Okay. And then before we move to the new one, what's the date one? So about 15,000 per month. I am the very good employee. We have more money than what we do. We're also spending a tremendous amount of money on the cabs right now also. Yes, we have the most of the vehicles that we have put up for you. We can 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 put up for you. Um, perhaps cameras, but we need to put those out. Security. Security. Mm -hmm. Security. 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 Required to have body cam. Okay, so, 
No, matter of fact, it's taken a lot of work to get budget, which would be uh, like $15,000 this year. And so last year, it's over. Mm-hmm. expenditures requested for those primary departments the <laughs> two hundred total for police. <laughs> That's the final request for police to be is it the final total request for the all capital expenditures? Because I think he knocked off the surveillance thing, right? So are they going to ask for anything else? Right. Right. How do you 
how do you, when you say it's healthy, um, what is healthy as a point of reference? What kind of coverage is needed? Well, the, debt. The, the ceiling that you have is 3.5% of your uh, equalized valuation. Uh, we are at half the year, year where we are first really are about to go. Um, that is about $17 million in net debt. Uh, last year we paid a little over a million dollars. So $17 million represents half a percent? So we can go all the way up to seven times that. Three and a half percent. The lower, the lower, much lower. The lower. So, so seven times that, we could go up to roughly twenty million and be at the ceiling. Right. Now, if you want to be. Right. <laughs> I'm not thinking. I'm not. I'm, I'm conservative. Uh, very here that make you come down from 18.1 million to 17.6 is the bonds, the no principle, and the bond principle. 
So those two have been reduced by a total of from last year's budget one forty, right? Well, those those are bonds that are that have matured. Yes, sir. One of the bonds fell off, and it, and it went and fell off. How many years were those bonds? Typically, it is. Typically, it's based on the life of the equipment that's purchased. So, what we're going to have means you end up with, let's say, getting more than six years for a bunch of new people. You know, or five years of life, and then getting more than six years, you build a building and have 30 years of life. You know, land the use of life from the last one you go out for a serial bond, and that'll be the use of life from that bond at max. I guess the three biggest items are the single bonus plus the, uh, the contingency, right? Even though the contingency that you've had in the right. past. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we at the last year's personal media that we've had in the past. And is there any reason we removed it this year if we did have it since it's on the contingency last year? So the, the contingency expenditures were, were primarily for the shop. Um, Potential litigation that we didn't, we didn't know. We, we had an idea that there could be, but we didn't. It, 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 nothing had come to fruition yet, and there were no expenses yet. We had to stop the budget. We could run the contingent uh, just in case we didn't exactly what the contingent is. This year, uh, we have a better idea of what those expenses are going to be to some extent, uh, and we looked at how we employed those individual uh, line items quite a bit to accommodate that. So we don't have a contingency. But they are reflected where they should be in place. Yeah, last year I have another question. I remember we were at 17.9 million and the final budget was 18.4 million, right? Because we were, I, mean, I thought we had added 600,000 last year. For some reason, the final budget appeared at 18.1, which is 200,000 above we, the final. Do you know what happened there? We had, I think, at least a dozen different duration of the budget last year. Um, I know that legal, legal work was one of the big conversations for us. We had started early in the year based on what our expenses were and we were extrapolating now and bills that kept coming in um, at a faster pace than, you know, what that extrapolation would provide for the budget. So we, we uh, increased that a couple times and then we landed on adding the extra money in contingency. So the contingency was relatively new. That, that, was, towards the, that was towards the very end of the budget like last year. Uh, so that's 135 of the, of the community, potentially 200 of the government. I think that those numbers change quite a bit to a couple of generations of the government. Well, the adopted was 18 months ago, correct? I mean, I don't, I, I don't believe that we've had any uh, amendments between the adoption and the adoption, but they were quite a few conversations before the adoption uh, where there were a, a lot of uh, versions of the budget in the cycle. Yeah, not with that though. Um, that would have to be made for that. That wouldn't have changed very much. No, it's, so this was as of when I ran when I ran that document which was right on May first, May second. So the number that you see on this, the larger document, has a cost of one cost. The number that you see in front of you here, I keep it running so that we have an idea of what our actual expenses are as they come after the after the year's closed. The, the budget amount would be actual amount. Running number and, and, and using me first to make that point. So, certainly, certainly, that's a few hours. But, after some of the other terms, and it's slowed down, it's slowed down. I mean, you, if you look at the at the, the curve of, of uh, how the expenses are coming in, it, it goes pretty steep down, but they do still come in for. You know, something will happen where uh, an invoice was sent 
non-receiving it, but they probably attend it, and they follow up six months later and say, hey, you know, what happened to the invoice that we sent you in December? And then we send it. So do you know what that means? For 2018? Yeah. I think it's just the 
it because of what had happened last year uh, so it was no longer available to him and, and therefore you awarded it to him so you could have your view of life and I'll have mine but mine is a more realistic of course well it's money and that's kind of like it's the money I mean it's just a council may so let's just be borrowing and make out I think we made it pretty clear that you would like to cut budget. I definitely don't want to tax it. We also have $800,000 in legal fees, right, for the planning board and the affordable housing. And we can put a plan on that, too. Well, you lawyered that up. You got an extra lawyer involved. No, you lawyered it up. No, you got an extra lawyer involved. No, no, Al wants and no one will ever believe you that Al wants is my lawyer. <laughs> no, that's not my lawyer. I'm proud that he's your lawyer, right? And he's charged just about $300,000. Proud that he's litigation counsel. And he's your lawyer. And how many for a while do you have to do And so is Jeff Serena and you will find So, and it's been very close because you want to. Well, no, because the, 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 the state has traveled us with this. And it's expensive. I know you're just uncomfortable when you're wrong and then I'm wrong. Oh, you know, like I am so it. not wrong. And also, whatever I say, what every action, what you have to understand is what every action this council takes, when we vote, what, when we vote on things, it always translates into money. So if you give Chalky $700,000, you got to pay I them. didn't give him anything. You, you earned it. You get money, you got to pay them. That's his money. Okay. So can we continue with this? Yeah. Or do I keep ranking on the political rage like you always say? It's not rage. It's it is. It is rage. It's sad. 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 It's sad.
I think there's a challenge with the talk about that in the next session. We've done that. No, no. We, we still have this. Okay, well, we have to get this stuff done. I understand. My understanding from what we know is that there will be no SROs this year because it's just impossible to hire them in the case of the district. I've got hired six SROs to do that. And we say that that's not possible. So the school is aware that that's not possible. Yes. 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 Yes.
Lieutenant Hill, what would the uh, or officer in charge Hill, what was his comments about that? For what reason? You're the liaison. I'm telling you. That's your job. I'm telling you. Exactly. He doesn't think it's feasible. He doesn't think it's wise. You'll have to take it up with him for the rest of the year. I also think it's not the appropriate time to talk about this. Just so for everyone's knowledge, when you're in liaison with the council with the department, you have to get past the first question. You can't just say that's what he said, and then when we ask you what the reason is, you need to give a reason because it's a logical extension of the first question, which is what the public is understanding. Have you ever been a liaison to anything? I've been a liaison to the public. Oh, that's an interesting. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Yeah, I have actually. Been? Many people. Many places. Many On this council, for this town. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, that's why your experience burns up so bad. My experience has been I appreciate done very well for our when you, when you are the liaison for yourself, well, when you let us know how to do it, this is a typical so anniversary. Can't answer a question, get flexed, and start name calling and make it a first name. Okay? This is the way you behave. I want to answer this model better. Michael Hale is a great question. We're in the middle of the process. And at that point, I think that would be the resolution that would be the first thing to talk to about the case of the council. Okay. Okay. The council. Our job, our our job as a governing body, is to govern, not not to let. Our, our other work people are our professionals. Yes, we do, but we should also we govern. That's what being a leader is all about. We are not capable of running. Being a leader is telling people what the right way to do things is. Uh, uh, is that my way? way just no, no, my, no, my, no, my way or the highway? What's my way? That's your question. No, I feel, and I thank Council the rule for bringing that up. I forgot about it. And I feel that I can't. I think that's very viable. I do, actually. How about the chief? What budget for the new chief's position and salary? Is that going to be a problem? Well, we really don't want to discuss that. We don't have to know what the public budget is. And also, this council will be voting. That's in the numbers, right? Yeah. So what's in the numbers? Like, I, I don't think that's information we want to put out there right now before we actually come to the situation. It hasn't been anyone selected. So, so just, just so that you, you know, the, the, the total salary and wage budget for the police is inclusive of um, anything that's going to be, it's, well, it's, 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 it's achieved, but it's also a number for overtime for our uh, school guards or you know, crossing guards or um, a potential um, collective bargaining agreement right. negotiation. So there's a lot of things that are all in that one number. So I mean, you can pull out the individual numbers, but it's all one budget in the debt. So it's also going to be contingent on, on where the collective bargaining is. Right. So with your referring to budget question, would uh, we the breakdown would be as question? Actually, send it to the entire council. Send it to the entire council. 
And then, um, uh, I have another question. By the way, which one do you have? Um, in 2018, um, well, in 2018, we had a large uh, uncollected tax report. Um, where is the tax report? Oh, yeah. On the summary document? Yeah, I tried to tell documents on the first one too, but it's. Uh, Not going to have enough to pay off the 
other that's going to go into a little client for it, and one million dollar cash, and then you know, three million dollar cash for it. It's different. Uh, you know, the realm that you're dealing with. That's not what we're doing this all the way. We all thought it was 1.2 or 1.1 million dollars, and then we came back with three million dollars. That is the change. It just means that you know, the public is looking at this number. It's not a true representation. Where can I find the information? Oh, it's all the time. But you still need to know what you're doing there. That is perfect. So it's not going to be that specific. It's not going to be that specific. So I know you guys, this is always a hot button number, but I know you guys want to talk about it. Where is that number? It's $300,000. He said it was the same as last year, $300,000. I think it's like more. This document says 262900 right? That, am I looking at it incorrectly? Right. Document. This summary document. The, the total police salary we just think is police. I'm not sure. I'm not. Oh, oh, that O O E is other expenses. Uh, that's other that's other expenses. Yeah. 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 Irving Avenue. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the um, money that was paid out for the retirements of the police officers for this year is uh, in excess of five hundred thousand dollars, close to six hundred thousand. Is that in the budget to be paid? Anybody can answer that knows the question. Answer. Well, who could hear you? What you talked about. I, that's why I'm asking the question. No, I'm, I'm saying who could hear you. So I'm, you said he talked about it, but I couldn't hear anything that was being said up here. It was all mumbles. Okay. Yes. Uh, so what we said earlier was that it's going to go to your special emergency uh, appropriation, which allows you to spread the cost over five years. And that's going to cost us uh, interest and bonding. Yeah. Now, what is it going to cost us? Borrow, we borrow the money, it would cost us just interest per year. Right. Okay. So we're going to pay interest on top of the 600000 But in the past, I think we had been pay, paid it out of current funds. Um, we, didn't, we didn't bond it or borrow it. We paid it okay. for the previous years. So we had, we had special money. What? We've had special emergencies in previous years as well. Not for that purpose, though, right? Absolutely. No, but in 14 and 15. 14 and 15. That was before my time. We didn't do it that way. 
Okay. Right. I mean, I, we should pay it, not not borrow for it. We shouldn't borrow. I'm I'm not saying the tax is good, but but if we paid if we paid it if we paid it out of the current budget in the previous years, we should be paying it out of the current budget now. Okay, I think that um, possibly we wouldn't be as uh, generous in some ways as we have been um, by allowing certain things in the retirement packages that were not under contract or supposed to be there. All right? Um, we gave uh, Chief Chiaffi, um payment for personal days. Personal days in like 20-something days. You're not supposed to get paid for those. There's other things that you gave him that you weren't supposed to, but you did. And that's that's taxpayers' money, too. So, um, also, now with the, um, <clears throat> when you were talking about the, the large tax appeal, I know from some of the resolutions in the past regarding tax appeals, uh, you uh, gave the um, the property a reduced rate for the following year, and and something the next year when you reduce the uh, the amount of the assessment, so that you actually didn't have to give them all cash when you're talking three million dollars. That you're not giving three million dollars to the uh, claimant. It's really six and one half than the other. If you give them credits going forward, then your collection percentage reduces and you have to increase your income for the taxes. Right, but, then you, but you're also not paying interest on it. And you're not paying bonding fees and yeah, attorney right. fees and everything. Right. bonding fees, there's, there's a special emergency, it's a resolution. If you borrow the money, you will have gas bond account if it's involved, involved couple hundred dollars. We're not talking about a lot of money. What we're talking about here is a way to deal with the issue that has to have to be dealt with at the least possible exposure to the taxpayer over a period of time. Part of, and part of the conversation we had, Chris, Debbie, and myself, is that, is that once some of this litigation is done. And the significant amount of legal fees that are in this budget, that were in last year's budget, go away. We're in a much better position to be able to afford paying off the tax appeal over a period of time, paying off the human taxes over a period of time, without having a significant negative impact on the mm -hmm. Well, I know um, I don't see legal fees going down because uh, you gave Mr. Marinello an extra 5000 a month for 10 months, and you also uh, hired Mr. Wunsch for 10000 for two months, and, and I was over 70000 now, um, and he's not even a uh, municipal uh, attorney. So uh, I don't see legal things going down when you have all the uh, favored sons getting more money. Um, also, I'd like to say that I'm very disappointed with the council and the council finance chair for a lack of transparency in the budget process. I've been coming to budget meetings from maybe 15 or 20 years, and this is the least transparent of any budget period that I have uh, witnessed. Um, I've gone to... Uh, the meetings where the department head would come in with a wish list, sit with the council, and the chairperson, the liaison, whatever you want to call it, the council person, uh, working with the department head, presenting to the council, and everything would be discussed, whether it was how many tires they were going to buy for the police cars, or they were going to buy cameras, or whatever you were going to do for each department. And um, you, you would be working off of the worksheet, although the public didn't get the worksheet. Uh, one or twice, Mr. Carson um, allowed 
members of the public to look at the worksheet and then hand it back at the end of the meeting so that we could follow the discussion. Okay, at this point, the public doesn't know anything about your budget. And besides the fact you cannot hear you when you're talking up here because everybody talks like in a whisper. Okay, so uh, I think it was very non-transparent, very closed door, and you should have had multiple meetings with the different departments and had them available to the public so we could know what's going in the budget, which we do not. Soon to be gone, Councilwoman Falk. Is that not money? I know, that's right. So yeah, soon people like you, all you do is criticize. And you sit up there laughing your ass Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, uh, just, just so I'm clear, um, what, what the resident was saying was the emergency. Uh, no, for the emergency. Okay. Uh, I guess Office and Mira is in that emergency appropriation also. And that was something that should not be in there. He's in there. You know, emergencies are not things that you know in advance about. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Maria Valari, 45 Jane Drive. Um, I have to tell you something. As a taxpayer, I would rather see my taxes go up and have some transparency in what you people are doing. It is clear to me, as it will be to a lot of people, that you are lowering your bottom line so that you can run on your, we can raise your taxes. And you know what? I don't appreciate that. And by the way, borrowing money and just paying interest doesn't make the principal go away until you actually make a payment towards principal. So what you are doing is just pushing it down the line and you are building up the debt for this town and eventually we will have to pay all that back and the taxes will be even higher than maybe if you address these issues. And Ms. Park, please, that's very rude of you. Uh, I know you want to go home to your husband, but that's rude for you to be smirking and laughing up there. You are an elected official and you should behave as such. Uh, I... I am really concerned about what's going on here because you know what? This is fairyland. To me, this is like, oh, well, you know what? We'll borrow the 600, we'll pay the interest down the line, we'll be able to pay the 600. Meanwhile, we don't know what's going to happen between now and when that 600 is due. And how many other 600s will we have to borrow? to continue all the expenses that this town is incurring in lawsuits. And if you think that maybe lawsuits are done, then you really are living in fantasy land because you continue, excuse me? I think it was a recent lawsuit. Excuse me, I'm talking, ma'am, 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 you are the rudest individual I've ever met in my life. You never learned manners. Okay, and I and that's enough. Okay, stop talking while I'm talking. No, yeah, you know what? That fish is this is more. I would like to say something after the fact. I'm concerned about what you people are doing, and I want to see some transparency. If you, in the past, have gone over and met with people and decided on budgets, I know when I was on the Board of Health, that did happen. And I want to know why you are throwing away all the rules and regulations to make it look like you're lowering our taxes when, in fact, our taxes will go up year after year after year and these amounts will be excuse me no do not oh my god well I think lowering the lines of what you're what you have why don't you just keep what's in the budget from the past did you hear when when you did this before it was during the police years what years were that was that 2008 2000 what was it so why are we going back to that no, you are living in the past. You are living in the past. And you should be, consi you should be considering the homeowners. 
I suggest you run for council and sit up here and do it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Sabari, for your suggestion. I can always count on you for really sound advice. Yeah, right. Just to pick up on a point, then. Uh, yes, I, I, I did direct her to not raise taxes. And that was all possible uh, without paying over a million dollars out. To people the the no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Right. It was all possible without paying Chaffee, Reed, and all these other people worth the money. Well, I don't agree with the emergency aspect. Well, how would you suggest we do it? Pay that cash flow. Anybody else? We don't have that yet. Anybody else? Yeah. Motion to close. No, just a hand up. So, wait. Oh, there's a Let the public speak. Went lower that. It's it's okay. I can speak up. I'm standing next to Mary, so perhaps she'll be able to hear me. It's okay. It's okay. I'll talk. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Comment. The Tea Land Seven. Oh, thank you. Uh, Karen Geiger, two seventy Alpha. The Tea Land Settlement. I was somewhat concerned uh, last year. I raised the fact that the audit statement was the first time that we, as residents, saw that there was a liability. To tea land, and at that point it was estimated to be in between 1 million and 1.5. Um, when you look at the settlement online in the court documents, you can see that the settlement was from 2008. I'd like to know why, in the past, no money was put aside for this. You talk about transparency, you talk about um, not bonding because you think that's inappropriate? Why did the prior mayor and council, knowing that there was a liability in excess of $1.2 million, not put more than $250,000 away, one, and given the size and the enormity of this transaction, why did we not know until now that it would be of this magnitude? Because this is clearly three times what was anticipated by the auditor in the financial statement last year. That's my first question. Does anybody know? Well, I wasn't going to take out my name, but uh, the, the number that we got was from our, uh, our tax appeal attorney. So, I mean, even, even the auditor took that information from the attorney, which is who I go by. I mean, I'm not going to tax for it again. So, um, the, the other part of that is there's hundreds of appeals that never get approved. They never get settled. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, you know, just off the bat assume that we can have a million dollar liability just because somebody filed a tax court. But this tax bill was approved by the appellate, divi- the appellate division of the court in 2008. Right. It's a different one? Oh. Same property. Okay. So this is for all the years after. So why did the tax rate not get reduced to reflect the 2008 amount? The assessment. I'm sure that it did. I don't, I don't have the history of it. I, don't I mean, it's just an egregious amount to be hit with at one time, and I don't understand why there was no preparation made either in reducing our assessed valuation of those properties to the 2008 level at some point from 2008 till now. Right. 
uh, received a call from him telling me that they had uh, reached a tentative settlement. And that uh, I know we're not, I'm a little hesitant to talk to them about it. We're not selling I understand that. But the number that came out of that discussion between the prior tax attorney and the plaintiff's uh, attorney Not, you know, I don't have a lot of history with this, and neither does the current tax attorney who is getting himself up to speed on this, and he can make a proper recommendation. But a lot of this, all of this really came out of, I guess, the last year of the settlement negotiation between the brand new tax attorney, Eric Lindsay's office, and the Okay, I have a, another question moving on from that. Um, in 2015, I believe, I guess this is the last year you were here, Mr. Wilcox, there was a negotiated um, emergency financial. You went to the, to the local finance board for approval to do a bond issue for tax appeals, which was about 1.2 million, 1.5, I, I don't remember. It was in that vein. Um, so this bonding for tax appeals is standard practice and going to the local finance board for approval to spread the debt out over multiple years as opposed to hitting um, residents with one large number and then down is a standard common practice in government. Is that not true? It is when the numbers are like... As opposed to 100,000, 200. Right, and the average impact... That's the whole one at 1.3 million. Is that still the same number? And as I recall, I'm sort of still remembering the first year in 2016, we had an emergency appropriation for 295 in December of 2016. Is that not correct? Right, that became known after. But, so the process of emergency appropriations for items that become known during the budget year but are not budgeted for is not an odd thing. No, and, and so yeah, you, you have to you, you would you would have to wait until after the budget is out. Right. The last time you had three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars, that became two ninety-five, and you did an emergency appropriation in December for, and did a short-term note in December, and then paid it back the following year. Right. That's what happened. So I just want to make sure that the process is not that different. It's just the subject matter of what's being bonded or what's being done in emergency appropriations is. So you're missing the timing of it. Oh, I'm not missing the timing yeah, of it at right. all. Please, it's my I, excuse me, I am speaking, I am speaking, I am speaking. It's not a matter of whether it's an emergency. You knew, you knew in March of 2016 that you would have these tax appeals of 295. You did not, I have the paperwork for it, you did not budget for them. Instead, you waited and put in an emergency appropriation in November. It was turned down by the local finance board, so you redid it in December, and which time you issued short-term notes. So that is exactly what happened. So please don't correct me on that. I know my facts on it. And they've been corroborated by the auditor to the local finance board. So let's move on. Um, the other thing I'm concerned about is uh, the the comment that was made about um, paying for and grouping, basically bonding or doing short-term notes or some way, in some way, putting together various police settlements. Uh, first of all, my understanding is that these are all contractual settlements and are no different from the contractual settlement that was offered to Mr. McMorrow when he retired. Now, I want to know, are there any other uh, police officers that retired in 2016 and 17, Chris, or is this, or is Mr. McMurray the only person?
was the police. So it was just the single police officer who was paid his accumulated contractual amounts, and that was spread over three years, I believe. That was part of the agreement. So spreading the um, the retirement benefits for police officers is also not unusual to spread it over three years, as practice is in this community. Correct. Okay. So you only had one then. How many police officers did you have now with Chiaffi, Regan? Is there anybody else or just the two of them? And Mira. So there were three officers, that, and you have the residual on McMorrow. So you have quite a larger hit than you've had in the past. Is that correct? Okay. I just wanted to understand the dynamics. Thank you. That was all very nice. However, the issue was Chief Choppy wasn't entitled to the money you rewarded him with. So, yes, of course, everything that happened after follows the normal course of events. But giving him that money in the first place, $700,000, was inappropriate. Anybody else? Karen McMorrow, 489 Summit Street. Ms. Savard. Mm -hmm. Ms. Savard, do you have a question? I just want to show you that in my hand. This is what was given to what we worked a lot of for three years. Excuse me, I'm just saying, you're the finance chair, I'm just saying what the council worked on. I'm just making a statement, it's not a discussion. I just want to show you. And this is what the administrator, uh, Ms. Seinel, made up for every council person this entire book. I know everybody up here. And the mayor. The ones. Right. So, did, was that make this up for you guys? No. So, what I... Oh, yeah, we got one, Gloria. You did. You did get it. I like it. It was carried here. It was... It was... Okay, that's an insult, and you did uh, get one not, because that's not fair. It was. Everybody got um, I made sure everybody got everything. Okay. <laughs> you did, Gloria. We carried it. We carried it. Okay. Okay, I believe the resident has the floor. Okay. okay, for the record, the books were carried. I carried it with Catherine. Gloriana didn't come to the office to pick it up, and we were gracious enough to carry their books here for them. Everybody got it. I'm disappointed. It's bad enough the public doesn't know what's going on, but to listen that Councilman Wu and the mayor don't know the salary of what the proposed chief is, and you don't want to tell him. This is not a secret. Okay? No, it's not a secret. Okay, there's the breakdowns that everybody got every year of every person's salary. It's public knowledge. Whatever you're thinking, the other, to the council people, they have the right to know what you're thinking. Okay, and yes, police officers' salaries are public, Ms. Sabari. So you really need to understand. Okay, um, okay, but they're asking basic questions. You didn't even want to tell them what the overtime is. You're telling them it's all tied together. You really... Uh, what I don't understand is no, it's not. It's absolutely not. Who? I I did listen, but uh, but it was pulling. T if you let me make my statement, in, in the audience watching, it's like pulling teeth to get any answer from the members sitting up there. Not even us, because you weren't open to the public. So what I'm not understanding, if I could speak without being interrupted, it really is not appropriate. Okay. All right. This isn't a secret, and and you, the council should know what's going on, line by line. You are almost halfway through the year. This has got to be the most irresponsible presentation of a budget that I've ever seen. Okay? And 
I don't understand transparency. Nobody even knows what they're talking about. You're, you're talking about a capital budget. You want to still talk about it in meetings to come? You got to talk about it now. You're supposed to be collecting wish lists. Liz, that you know this. I did this with you in 2016. The wish lists from the department are supposed to be circulated to all the council members. And then you come to the meeting, your meetings that's supposed to start in February or March, not May 29th, and you start talking about it then to see what you can do, what you can't do, and all of that. The contingency line, Chris, come on, you know better than what that answer was. That contingency line also was for the, accumu the, the um, monies for the police officers that was in the contract that M Mr. Reversa put together for the bank time. How much time do we have on the books banked that the police officers haven't uh, cashed out yet? What is the, what's the liability? I know what it was when I left. Okay, can, can somebody get that number, please, for the next meeting? It was close to 200000 when I left. I don't know what it is now, but that $50,000 contingency was to cover that as well, Chris. And you were adamant with myself, Catherine, and myself and Jamie that you wanted money in that budget in case those monies were cashed in. Are you putting money in to be prepared for that if any police officers draw on that bank, which they have a right to do? If, I don't know what the number is, if it's 175 now, whatever it is. According to the contract, with no notice, they can just ask for full payment. You have knowledge of that. You can't do an emergency appropriation for that. We had 50000 in that last year. Where's that fifty? You should now, if we didn't use it, do we use it from last year, Chris? Okay, so you sh well, somebody just said it's zero now. It went from 50 to zero. Well, you should put the 50 back. You should put another 50 in. So now you're at 100 if you have 175 liability. You know, th that was the whole purpose we started that, Chris. We listened to you. Okay? So I advise you all have knowledge. Now I'm reminding you of it again. It, that was one of the reasons. You wouldn't have been at that conversation, Ms. Sabar. You weren't on the council then. Um, okay. What is the... Um, what is the... You're rude. You're a really rude person. You really are. No, I'm telling you that we're, it's May. I'm saying it's May 29th, and you haven't had one meeting yet. What is the what is the carryover like? No, she didn't ask the question. I did ask the question. You're doing a bad job. You're not doing it the way I used to do it when I was on I didn't say that. We were yeah, good. That's, that's exactly. that's exactly. that's exactly. I didn't say that. That's exactly we were good. what you said. All right, look, I think the takeaway, and this is for Chris, because I'd like you to just be consistent. No matter what the customer wants. Right, he was adamant about that. Just be consistent. Don't get swayed by people's political Okay. Um, and by the way, we are, you're a council of, uh, it's a committee of three. Lizette, I appreciate it coming forward saying we did it the first year with only one person, committee of one, I mean, committee of the whole with one chair. But we learned, and we all learned together, Ellen, that it's a committee of three and then a council. Okay, so you're all supposed to be working together, and that's all, and we worked together for the last two years. I thought we did anyway. Um, Chris, what's the carryover, carryover liability of, well, oh, you don't know, I guess. Okay. Um, Mr. Wilcox, um, respectfully, I don't agree with your philosophy of uh, paying over a time period for accumulated uh, leave. When, but you can do it, but you're increasing debt. So what you're actually doing, and if that's your choice, it's your choice, you have the vote. No, but, excuse me. I'm speaking to the council. You're proposing it. You're telling them they can. For a two million dollar park, and now we're talking about four million for taxes, and now you don't want to do that. I don't understand. That's a, it's a separate issue because this is it's not political. No, this isn't political at all. I don't believe in I don't believe in incurring debt on a liability of a payout to a um, to an employee. That's like we can have differences of opinion on how much of a mortgage you should have on your house. That's my belief, lower debt for those types of items. Um, they're known items, and you know about it, and I believe that you should be preparing better. If not, and that's the way you want to present your budget, it's a smoke and mirrors unless you tell the public, hey, we're increasing your debt.
but we're not we're spreading this out over this many years if you're up front and tell them the truth that we're increasing your debt by 600,000 then that's your choice um, to correct Miss Geiger Mr. McMorrow's pay, payout was over four years it wasn't over three years and by the way um, I don't know who answered Miss Geiger I think Chris maybe you weren't sure there wasn't um, there were just as many individuals that were paid out that first year you had Danny Morrissey that retired into retired in 2015 he was on the list and so was Mealy and I believe there was one other individual we had a payment with Shalou so we had four people as well and we paid it okay um, as for the uh, um, tax appeals how much is the liability besides CNBC like other than the the, the liability that we know of other than that, what are what are our tax appeal liabilities? The exposure sheet that was provided from Bob McNerney. Uh -huh. um, the rest of the appeals are pretty much. Okay, so there's not a substantial. No, nothing else that's big for you to have. Okay, I'm just just asking. Um, okay, uh, the litigation. I know this is a hot topic because. Um, what's the amount of litigation that you have uh, attributed for the budget this year how much money are you putting what's the dollar number uh, $1,350,000 is, oh. is, is 550 in our legal OE wait I'm sorry because $1,350,000 yeah, $550 in our legal OE line uh -huh. So you're okay. So co-op, I'm going to keep that separate. Okay, so you're only putting 550 in the legal and the other stuff. And then we also have additional You were, uh, yeah, you were, I mean, you you had a very strong opinion last year about making sure that we had enough money in there for the litigation. Given the amount of litigations that we still have this year, um, obviously I heard the comments by Ms. Park, you know, um, you, if you don't want to get sued, then you need to follow the rules. Um, and with Oprah, and um, if you have any comments, you can write to Judge Farrington. She seems to have a very strong opinion about Emerald Clips. Um, and the Oprah's... Um, you know, the borough has issues with their office and how they're handling it. So, um, Chris, are you come? I'm not, Debbie, I'm speaking, I'm, please. I'm going to ask you a question. No, I was jerking to Chris. I did look at the current cases that have ongoing. We did settle quite a few. And the ones that are still ongoing, we've already hit our max of 11.5% I appreciate that, but unfortunately, prerogative rates and um, they don't fall under those. And you have many of those right now. Um, the last thing I just wanted to bring to your... I, I don't think that's funny, Councilwoman Park. It's pretty serious, especially when you're losing out to the degree you are. Um, I just think this is really important that the council needs to understand this. Um, I only was able to... to see this because of an Oprah that I got from Mrs. Duffy about a week and a half ago. But you, um, it was a, it was in response to an Oprah that you gave to Mrs. Geiger. This is from Mrs. Geiger. So you provided her with the payouts for, uh, there was none for Mr. Me for retired Captain Mira. There was one for Captain Regan. There was one for um, Deputy Chief McMahon. There was one for Michael Choppy. So I just was really taken aback when I saw certain things that you paid that I don't believe legally you had the right to pay. So whichever council, and I hope whoever did it the first of Mr. Marinello, you weren't here, so it wouldn't have been you. Um, the this budget, it's money. So does Mrs. Geiger, and so do other people too. Okay. So Mrs. Geiger had put in over, which I gave her, and then when Mrs. McMahon put in over all the overs, Mrs. Geiger's response was that. Was it? Okay. 
about it's a budget item. This is money you're appropriating for debt, and I'm bringing this to your attention. Okay, on, on scheduled days, um, we paid uh, Captain Regan 11 days, which was $8,675. The PBA contract is quite clear. Employees, and it's on page 70, Mr. Marinello, if you need to look it up to make it easy for you. Employees working a schedule of five working days, then two days off, will be compensated with an additional 15 days off per calendar year. The additional 15 days off must be used within the calendar year, and they may not be carried over or credited for compensation. So, Mr. Reed, you should have never, I don't know who oversaw this, I, you're the chair? I know, but you all voted on it. And you're voting on numbers, and not just on numbers. So, whatever process, please, you need to be careful, right? Because you don't want to, now you're going to have to go back and do a new resolution. I don't know if you signed the contract. Well, actually, Ms. Duffy sent me that too, and I saw something in his contract, Mr. Marinello, I don't know if you're aware of it. It's never been done. They tried to do it with Mr. Morrissey, and they stopped it right away. He wants to get paid for hourly rates to go be deposed. That's like paying a witness what to say. We've never done that. It's not allowed. Now, that's a separate issue, but you need to look into that too, sir. Um, to go on to Chief Chaffee. According to Chief Chaffee's uh, paperwork, you also paid him for 16 schedule days. That comes to $14,695.52. It's not in this contract. I couldn't find it. If any of you can find it, I've read it four times and couldn't find it. Well, I, okay, but I'm just going to give them all. Go back and look and see, but I couldn't find it. They also paid him for 26 personal days. They paid him, his contract only says he can be paid up to 10, no more than 10. So you also paid him an extra 16 personal days, which comes up to 14695 So you paid him a total of 29391 How do you make mistakes like that? It's almost thirty thousand dollars. Okay, so you need to well. Right, you need part of the settlement, right? You can't be paid for personal days to carry them over. There's no settlement. You've been going over and over that there's no settlement that he earned this. It's not in the contract. Okay, and Mr. Regan had it too. So I would expect, on behalf of the taxpayers, that you're going to straighten out this mess and get those monies back because they're the ones with taxpayers. And, uh, if I, okay, I appreciate if you can have an answer by, by June, the June meeting, especially since you're in the middle of the budget. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public wishing to be heard? Do you see anyone put a motion to vote? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. All in favor? Aye.